Okay, so this is the advanced tutorial section. So as I've done with the basic tutor the beginner tutorial and the intermediate tutorial, I'll put a link into the previous uh, advanced tutorial which was done in uh, 2020. So yeah, just to do a comparison, this is <clears throat> these are just shortened versions. We're just seeing if anything's changed or keeping the same mindset, practicing um, the, the concepts that we've been working on, which is the answer process, simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. Um, that's the complete overarching uh, header for it all. Underneath all that, we've got so many concepts um regarding chess you've got to be flexible against whoever you're playing against so it's the game that you're playing right here right now you don't have an evaluation tool while you're playing you have your personal evaluation tool so you kind of developing your own evaluation tool as you're going through if you're interested in you know improving your, your chess play it might not be for rating it might be just for the quality of your game there are differences to why people play chess. There's many reasons why they play chess. Some people just play like to play it because they like the way the pieces move. Or they actually like the board. You know, they like the shape of the board, they like the shape of the pieces. And and they just like to hold them in the hands and be able to just maneuver them around the board. They're not interested in winning anything, but they just enjoy playing the game and participating. It might be a social thing where they just it's in the background you know so it's not being taken seriously and then you've got the other side of the coin where basically it is taken seriously you know and looking to improve your performance and looking into the archives of um, players researching players watching players play learning from those learning from your own evaluations all types of things can go on there's differences as to why people play chess so never have that mindset of oh well everybody's got to be wanting to be good that isn't necessarily the case it might be that's just want to improve <laughs> um the quality of their play in a sense so that they can have a better social game or they just want to be able to maneuver their pieces a little bit better on their beautiful chessboard that they admire so much you never know but yeah, I suppose in a way, it's an improving. They want to improve something. But not necessarily in the sense of ratings. Or championships or tournaments, competitions or anything like that. So in this particular game here, we're talking about that because we're in the advanced section now. And it's really about understanding. Well, if you're in the advanced section, surely you're wanting to be like a champion, this, that and the other no it's still the same thing um you can still be a good social player and have the skills of a an advanced player and you still enjoy playing the game because you're still educating yourself you're still learning but you don't necessarily want to be a champion or anything like that you're not interested in ratings or anything like that you might be like a, a 1200 player but you've got so much experience um that realistically you're really round about maybe 2000 plus but nobody's ever going to know because you don't enter any competitions and you don't go to many rated competitions if any at all so you never know who you're playing because you don't know their motivations so we opened up going with the basics now with the advanced process um, the only real difference that we identified from the original um, tutorial for the advanced level was round about the calculations. We pushed it to like a maximum of four, you know, in terms of being able to have a much improved game, but also realistic game, because once you go past four calculations, you kind of lose the will to live because um, you do all that calculating then the opponent doesn't do what you've set you've um, calculated and you may make a mistake if you don't recalculate properly you know you might have the oh, moment where it's not done what I've wanted so I'll just do this move 
but you've not recalculated so you have to be very careful of those types of things so in this game here it is about calculating right from the start we understand the basics we're trying to manage nothing different yeah and as we also found out in the previous um, advanced tutorial there's no difference the only difference now is that through experience or through your knowledge or your training or your research you're now looking at the game slightly differently in terms of your calculation that's it keeping it as simple as possible so we attack the king we do that in the basic level because it's like attacking a higher piece it's attacking the main piece oops and we take the piece off the board keeping it simple straightforward and we castle straightforward we've done that in the beginner games in the intermediate games nothing different there at all so now at this stage here we know that the opponent is pushing their fianchetto type thing so they're wanting to bring their bishop here and we don't like the fianchetto we think it's a bit slow but we have to try and find ways of trying blocking that down as best possible he still does have his um, head of the snake here um, not to contend with but it, it could be that we deliver an attack there before he actually gets his bishop there so then at least if the knight is in here we can push this pawn in the center and then at least it's e even stevens so we do push through the center before the bishop gets the power base and starts angling towards our rook so forward planning this bishop has got quite a lot of meat on the bones it's a lazy man's fianchetto type thing where it's attacking through right through to the rook but if you can block that off and not get carried away with doing your own knight moves bishop moves that type of thing then you're not weakening that area So that's our initial calculation probably a four step calculation based on one maneuver that the opponent could potentially put in place so this was pretty simple at this point here so we could capture nice and steady away nice attacking the pawn here so we're just bringing the knight through and defending the pawn pretty simple stuff supporting so all the way through we're really looking at position putting any checks on any pieces capturing threatening blocking whoops supporting and then back to um, positioning again so the castle so at this point here now could have done quite a few things could have pushed the pawn up here but i'm thinking shall we get our bed sorted out first bring the rook here supporting before we start pushing here maybe potentially getting the bishop out at some stage you know getting the pieces working um and then bit then going for the attacks because you never know what's going to happen but they actually block down 
in the first instance so at this moment i'm thinking well we don't really want them feeling happy so my knee-jerk reaction is to take this off the board and then get get settled that way and then maybe we get the queens off the board earlier than expected so we do actually capture and they capture so we bring the bishop out as we mentioned x-ray through to the queen all simple calculations from this point here yeah so when they've pushed down that changed our calculation because we were planning to push this pawn up at some stage after the bishop had come out here so we had to change our calculations so that had a bit of the huh, in my mind didn't do it in physical but in my mind it had the hmm okay what do we do now but it was simplified so looking at it quickly with a calculation capturing if his pawn does capture that's fine we can now bring this out here x-ray and through to the queen giving them something to think about so that's not many a calculation but let's have a, how many arrows have we got for green one two so we're minimized on two at the moment there was there anything else capture capture bishop comes through anything else don't think we did any further calculation other than that so that was a simple calculation so that was based on the calculation from the intermediate where it's the one two in the beginners we're not expecting any calculations because we're just basically learning how the pieces move so we went for a one two here captured captured and waited for the opponent to see what they're going to do so they push down onto the bishop so we have a choice do we take opening up their bishop or do we bring the bishop back so that we can put more pressure onto this pawn and that looks like a nice touch for us so again that's a, probably a one two calculation pretty simple straightforward stuff we know that they're going to attempt to defend this pawn but it would be giving them something to think about if we got that type of position so we bring the bishop back and computer's probably saying take it or something yeah it's, it's saying take the knight but we have a plan of our own this is what i'm saying we have our own gauge bar yeah i don't really like that position because it just gives the knight the space again so why should i allow them to have that space again i think we can work a little bit better so the queen now moves basically it looks like it's protecting the pawn here it's almost like it can sense that we are going to be doing this maneuver and putting pressure onto this pawn so we bring our knight up now looking to actually attack the knight here i think if he had left his queen there we would have been bringing the knight here attacking the knight anyway but we're attacking the queen attacking a higher piece waiting for the knight to actually capture probably take with the pawn maybe take with the queen undecided
So they captured. So we took with the queen after a lot of deliberation in our brains from the calculation, because it was only a one, what well, might have been a one calculation there. So we put the knight through, knew the knight was gonna capture. So yeah, it's a two calculation. And at that point, it's like, well, what does the opponent do from here? We're still looking to put pressure onto this pawn because he's got one, two pieces and three pieces on there. We've got one and potentially coming to be another one here, but it looks a little bit slow, but this file is open and his queen is facing that file. So the knight comes down and puts the pressure onto our queen, asking us basically the question. Um, we have to provide an answer of some sort. Uh, so I'm just hiding the queen here. I'm looking really to sort of like protect this area, but really looking for a little bit of a discovered check on the king type thing to see if we can some, put some pressure on the king somewhere across here, which only makes sense to me with the idea obviously of putting pressure onto their queen as well but really did like the idea of somehow squeezing this knight through I know the bishop really wasn't going to get any play um, so bringing it here probably might have been the saving grace but somehow trying to fashion some sort of stealth attack towards the king Gary it's really quite difficult when the pieces are all over the place but I'm also looking to see what long range attacks the opponent has got on us so the rook comes through come behind so now we have to be very careful because they're looking for a back rank checkmate yep because our plan was to actually attack the queen obviously they sensed this yep so they they were quite a good sensor really because they sensed what we were attempting to do and they looked like they were blocking off all these attempts which is really quite annoying but I think in chess, if you're wanting to improve, you have to really delve into that annoying thing. They're not just going to give it to you. And it's how far you want to go with developing your chess, but really it just gets harder and harder and harder. Yep. Um, the higher up you go, the harder it gets because the person does not want you to win. They don't want to give you an advantage. So they're going to do everything in their power to not let you get an advantage in the game. So if you're if you're not prepared for that and you're going to get upset at the fact that oh I've tried everything and they're just not getting in. That's where maybe yeah take a break and if you genuinely want to go for it come back with a new renew a renewed vigor and it's basically saying okay I'm willing to I'm going to I'm going to improve my stamina I'm going to improve my chess um, endurance because that's what it is it's chess endurance like in this situation here I wanted to get the queen I'm like oh so I know there's going to be a back rank thing going on so I probably need to get my king a flight square but is there something I need to do before them I need to make sure that my bed is ready and I still need to make sure that this bishop is putting pressure because he's only got one two pieces on there at the moment we've got one two three so it felt like a magical situation but what I've just mentioned about endurance stamina I knew it was easily defendable Pawn could push here, he could bring the rook here, you know, supporting it. So it is easily defendable, but I am giving them something to think about, and I am hopefully making them do stuff they didn't want to do. So the rook comes through, it's supporting. So yeah, it gets that hurt in the head again, like, ah, oh, but I already knew it was easily defendable but I am developing my pieces on the board in the way I want to develop. So I'm still that movement in time up. So now we realize obviously, well not realize, but we knew we had to give the king a flight square because they are chomping at the bit to come and do a back rank checkmate. So they push their um, pawn down. So I'm thinking, well, there is a bit of space here to put a little kind of momentary check on the king. 
but it's got bigger fish if the queen can get here then we do have the knight coming here putting pressure on this pawn in the area around the king and maybe just maybe we might be able to get a checkmate of some sort i feel a bit bad that the dark square bishop really is kind of locked in but it's doing an okay job at the minute but this long-term movement here so how many greens have we got one two three and potentially four so that's a four move calculation from one side of the board to the other side of the board so now we decide okay this is time to actually go for it so get rid of their queen I didn't think they would take actually but I think maybe they thought they're going to be an advantage thing because they've got two rooks they're going to have um, a knight and a bishop as well so we can hide the king away but it is showing that they're winning now look at that gauge bar so I'm probably going to expect to see that go bigger for them throughout the rest of this um, game now Mm-hmm.
So they moved the rook 
yep I was hoping they didn't see it but you know ready to jump in there and get that old checkmate situation well it wouldn't be a checkmate but a nice check because the queen would just bounce here and just keep mashing all the pieces up but they saw that so that's fine that was another big uh -huh in in the head yeah so it's a matter of oh, it's a matter of looking at the key spaces and the key pieces and the areas around the king to just note where to attack but because this is not winning for us <clears throat> it's got plus 0.5 but it's nothing major so we bring the queen down to put the check on the king like we mentioned and then the king just hides in the corner so it's it's a draw at this moment in time now they're actually winning here like i said i'm not really expecting to show that we're winning because in the grand scheme of things this should be theirs because they've got more material on the board but we had the initial plan of getting some type of activity here with the knight attacking the pawn and then another huh, maneuver yep basically now the rook's now attacking the queen spoiling those types of things so that's the expectation of spoilers in the advanced area is so key if you don't expect spoilers then you're going to get really shocked so then you have to then keep on trying to find better positions hopefully stronger positions and hopefully getting your pieces working together we had an idea of squishing the king so we brought the queen back up still wanted to maintain the pressure on this pawn because i'm thinking well maybe we can still get the knight up here and then the rook comes up i wasn't a little bit confused by that but then i thought oh they're going greedy munching for these pawns so those two moves that they're going to make there hopefully we can get our knight in here and get the king squished a bit somehow so we bring the knight up hoping fingers crossed that they and they did drop the pawn and i was always expecting the pawn to drop um, but if they were asleep i was looking to take it because the knight can jump here and we were always looking to jump here and then start putting pressure towards the the bishop but the positions changed now so i've had to deal with all this shifting um the shift in the fact that they they've blocked off my attempts towards their king gary so we bring the queen down now attacking the king with the support from the knight again it's like trying to give them something to think about oh look at that gauge back oh plus five i don't i don't think i took the proper advantage of this plus five though because we seem to have to put a lot of work in so let's see what happens so we brought the knight up like that's quite nice don't like this rook being here did really want this bishop to be uh you know so they could hit that but it can't so the rook takes the pawn so we can take the pawn happy with that because we knew i knew that could take place but I couldn't really see the end. I really wanted an end. It's all because this rook was here. So I don't, I bet you I didn't play it the best. So then the king moves. And we move the knight back again, looking to take the bishop off the board potentially. But did I miss a fork of some sort? No, no, no. Then the knight moves. So we take the bishop off the board oh it's not it's not telling us off for taking that that's good so then the rook takes and obviously we can take the pawn in the center with a check on the king and even in this position here did not feel that it was com like it's showing here it's plus 6.5 um because they've got the rook still and they can do some stuff and they've got a knight as well so if they were their knight there was this position where this knight got and i thought oh i think he could get a draw here he could get a draw or actually win so i just want to see what it shows because i don't think yeah so the knight drops down then we move the queen for a check then we take 
then they take and oh it's, it's all over at that point i think where was it what did i do yeah so taking this i thought you could go here and then obviously if i attack but then i thought he had something with this type of thing look here but then we could make a bit of space as the machine is show, showing okay that's fine yeah i had, in my head i had a panic on thinking his knight could come in and do some sort of checky type thing on me because it was blocking my whip excuse me because it was blocking this port this area here so i thought he could just keep going backwards and forwards but he obviously couldn't yeah okay happy with that so right good good just goes to show overthinking certain situations and then the opponent resigned at that point so that was an interesting game definitely in the advanced area because um it looks like the person's done like a report analysis we have four inaccuracies no mistakes no blunders <laughs> with a 94 percent accuracy damn the opponent had three three um, inaccuracies, two blunders, and an eighty six percent accuracy. Um, accuracy, something or the other. Um, so yeah, that was that's quite good. You saw it here live. A bit scrappy, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, it is what it is. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically. Uh, so that's the advanced section and probably play one more but don't really need to because at the end of the day it's the same stuff that we do um for the beginner for the intermediate and it's really just looking at utilizing the simple maneuvers simple attacks but the difference between all three is the beginners we don't expect them to do calculation per se just get used to the, using the pieces how they move and maybe um yeah just basically how the pieces move on the board don't overexert on the beginner level then in the intermediate you probably expect more of a one two calculation and start m moving your pieces together sort of try and get a little bit of teamwork going to see how they work with other pieces yeah and then in the advanced then that's where you, you're kicking all of those things and just increase your calculation which makes you obviously think a little bit more about what you're actually doing with your pieces either singly or working them together so then up to a maximum of four calculations should see you right um, your one twos should be really quite neat and nifty as we've displayed in this game here we didn't go over the four calculation at all naturally because that's what we've been training to do the longer the game i suppose then we would extend our calculation out but i just find it very painful when you've done that kind of calculating you know over four moves and then the opponent just blase it just does something totally different and it's a total waste and like i said right at the very beginning of the video um that's when we can as humans will go oh they've not done what i've said so i might as well do this that's the devil finger and that is what happens to people you know we sit there for ages and we're looking and they're going to do this or they potentially could do that blah 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 and then out of the out of the forest comes something that you never expected in your life so then your brain goes well i'm tired i'm not doing another recalculation this is what i'm going to deal do with that and off we go so really i think it's learning about recalculating once you've done your maximum four or even your two calculation or your one calculation if the move that they've done 
hasn't sit well within your calculation and you've not basically seen that you've got to recalculate simple as rather than doing a knee-jerk reaction to oh well i'm simply going to do that because the picture might look different it might not be a simple response that is required it might need a little bit of effort and calculation this is the advanced tutorial so developing as usual look for maybe some improved calculation this looks um, like it's going to be simplified this game so just block off as we do normally just uh, pushing through blocking the pawn uh, do, do, do. let's just bring the bishop here if the knight decides to jump in there we can take it so now with this action here you've got like the bishop Bishop attacking this pawn, then the queen's going to be looking to come here. So if we castle here longer term, bishop's going to be coming and smashing this here. This pawn's going to push down, try to open up that area. Now, seeing as we know all of this, and it might not happen, but it's only one move that they've made, but we have been there before. Um, do we castle kingside? Do we? Are we interested in doing that or not? Or do we make in moves to try and go on castle on the queen side? That's the decision. That's the thought process that I'm going through at this moment in time. But I'm going to castle. So I'm going to castle into the potential attack area that the opponent is potentially going to put on us. Because we know about it. So now we're going to kind of pre prepare our pieces to deal with that as best possible. Let's bring the knight across. So I'm going to try and give the king some company. Obviously I'm looking to swing here to come here to attack the bishop. Just getting myself set up a little bit first. So now we can attack the head of the snake if we so desired. Uh, that might be a goal for us. I think we'll attack the head of the snake first. Before bringing the bishop back maybe. And coming here. We might not have time to do any of that. Because as we know we might get the moments where they do something that we have to think about but we're trying to give them things to think about we're attacking the head of the snake like we say consistent with that messaging going to take no point messing pushing here because he's got his pawn there so we might as well just take the head of the snake off the board gives them something to think about and now let's have a look what's changed We've got some nice open file here for the rook. Got a nice open file here for the rook. Knight can, bishop can, bishop can attack the knight, but it's not. Um, could do it this way, attacking the knight, then give the king some company coming here, because we we know this is coming happen. This is happening, so we've known that right from the start. But now the rook is not there anymore, so maybe they might not do that. But there's still potential for that. So if we can give our king some company, bring it back here, then we've got more pieces. But we still do have this a little bit of attack here. So we could do that ourselves, couldn't we? And attack there. If we get rid of this, then his queen comes in. No, it just replicates with the knight. Right, so that's a lot of thought process there. In the advanced area, I would expect this type of thought process going on. And whether you choose the right one, you know, it, at the end of the day, we could go for the cheap attack here, but it can replicate, which is a bit annoying. So am I wasting that? I'm going to bring it here just to get the movement out of the way. Uh, ba -ba 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 probably get the bishop here and then bringing the uh, rook here attacking our queen oh exact move so he doesn't like us having that position so what has he created though has he created a weakness by actually doing that we can swing here if his rook's gonna he's gonna have to push the pawn down to get a bit of balance i am moving away from my king so maybe a swing back but then his rook will come on this side. 
I think we'll just go here. I think we'll just go here. If his rook does move, we'll take the pawn. Could get trapped though. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Don't want to get trapped. Two open files. The rook going to be fighting. The rooks are going to be fighting for the open files. Oh, so he's giving us the position. So we can attack the bishop. Obviously his queen probably comes here. So he's owning this square. Is he opening his king? King, is he brave enough? So we're happy with coming here. We've mentioned that right from the very start. Maybe um, I think I've just moved this queen out of the way so that we can get here. But I want to get it to the other side of the board now. <laughs> <clears throat> Might be a bit of jostling. But hey, he's coming for it at last. Okay. So if we attack here, then obviously his queen's not going to do anything anyway. So let's do that. And just open up the rook. Yeah, so oh, I thought I did a yeah, so open up the rook. So that feels a lot better for us now. It's like cleared the air because of that attack that we knew they were going to be putting in right at the very start of the game so now this changes that this changes the goalpost because in my head now i'm going well now the opponent doesn't know what to do in a sense so all these look at all these things that are blocked off so we could come here or could come all the way back down again and then face off his queen no nope. come here i'm trying to get to the other side of the board how am I going to do that? Dark square. I don't think the dark square lets me get across the other side of the board, does it? Let's go here. And we could potentially attack their bishop if we need to. So 1-2. It's coming for something again, but he can't even move that bishop. So we can attack his bishop. That's a funny old move, but I'm going to attack the bishop like we said, with the one two. He's kind of trapped in there, so he might he might not take, and he might just, you know, so that his queen's on in the file. But then we can chase the queen away with the rook. So that's another one two. No, he's not having any of that. He's bringing the rook into the game. So let's do that and then just let's see if we're exchanging the rooks. He's probably not going to exchange the rook. He'll probably just bring his other rook behind so that he still keeps his rook there. Then our rook can't come here because we don't have any support. So well, let's rethink that one maybe. So going to attack his rook. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. And just attack the knight. It's like a blood fest. So he's got this center pawn here. He doesn't really want to move the knight because we have the pawn. But issue we've got is if he gets this rook here, mind you, he can't do that, can he? Uh, let's go with this. Do we lose out? No, nope. let's grab here. For a brief moment, we're plus one out of that craziness. Probably getting the queen here, maybe to keep some kind of pressure on this pawn. Oh, he's coming down with the big guns. Just don't forget his queen is there protecting this pawn. So he's coming blasting down now. Mm -hmm. He or she, probably a she, maybe. Any, any, any yellow? Yeah. Don't know. Oh, he's got one further, so he's take, going to get the pawn back. And if we crush onto this pawn and they take, that's not going to give us anything, is it? Are we looking to protect this pawn? We could bring the queen here, protecting the pawn. Hmm. Really want to squish, but we can't squish because of this. If we tripled up and maybe attack the rook, 
but then he just drops down because he's got like a checker. Ooh, no, it won't be a checker meter though, would it? Right, let's have a look at this one closely. This one. So we go here. I don't think they're going to take because they'll go for the cleverness, which is there. Then we'll take. Then his rook takes with a check. Uh, oh, that's not good, is it? I thought the other rook was there. We go there. Oh no, the rook is there. Then he drops. Although we do have a queen there. He drops. Then he goes dead. Then if this rook takes, then the queen takes. Let's go here. Let's go here. Was that a two? That was a two, was it? One, two. Yeah, a one, two. See how hard it is to even just get a one, two calculation. So you put a lot of effort into a one, two, and then if they do change, then it's like crazy time. So when you're talking like even going up to a maximum of four, and then they don't do what you want to do, that's why your brain goes, I'm not, I'm not doing the calculation again, I'm just going to do this move. But I think we have to relearn to do the recalculation. Stacking the queen, still chomping at the bit to get this. Uh, could attack his queen. I don't think that makes it strong for us though, does it? If they did take, then we took with the rook. Now he's got two rooks, boom, takes, he takes, still got the check, boom, 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 come down, he goes up, we go down, so it's going to be a draw, potentially. Uh, is there anything different? I could, yeah, I don't think he's going to take it though, I think he's going to think he's being clever. He's going to come to the centre and attack him down here. Or, if I did attack his queen, he could still come down with a check on my, because he's got a check, then he's got another check. Then I come down to block, then he takes our queen, pawn takes. That could get a bit messy, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, I don't have anything. Well, I probably have. I probably have, but I'm being a bit lazy now. I'm being a bit lazy. The computer's going to frown at me doing this exchange attempt. And that's part of growth. But I know full well it does. It's going to go. No, you could have found something totally better. And my, brain, my eyes are still looking for it now as I'm talking. But... In my head, I'm just going, no, let's just get the big gun off, if we can. We know that potentially they're just going to go for the Alakines, well, it's not Alakines, but a version of Alakines type thing attacking down here. So we're going to lose tempo, going to have to make some space. We've still got the attack on here, but they're just going to keep defending that area. Queen's moved, you see, not even exchanged. Just he's just holding court on this pawn. It's attacking the pawn as well. It's attacking the pawn can't do that. Mm -hmm. Come here with the rook. Hmm. Come here with the rook. I think I need to give my king a flight square, but he's attacking a pawn. I don't really want to come off of here. Could go here. This pawn pushes down. Come here, somehow I feel like I'm losing these pawns. I don't know why, but let's go here. Let's go here. Mm. 
It's getting deeper than my brain can cope with. I kind of moved there kind of quick, so I'm all falling into here. It's attacking the pawn here, isn't it? So it's almost begging me to push here, but then it's just going to be attacking our queen. And we can come here, attack their pawn, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So do we push this pawn up, knowing that that is going to happen? Let's just do that. I can't see it. unless of course he's got ideas of doing some sort of attack here. They're moving a bit too quick for me now. Like they look like they've got it all sewn up. This isn't right. This isn't right. I'm gonna attack again. It's gonna go back to save it. Hmm. A bit annoying. <clears throat> oh sha, come on. Well, it's not oh sha because I can't move my rook, can I? <clears throat> He's now got me a bit trapped in. If I come up, because it's going to be coming down. I can't go up, I'll, it's checkmate. Well, not checkmate, but down, down. Oh, let's attack. Oh. oh, come on. There must be something. Come on, answer process. What is the move? What is the move? Down, down, down. Can you get escapes? Move across here. I think this pin is a bad thing, you know. I'm going to have to move my king. I don't really want to do that, though. <laughs> okay, let me see. Has Queen got something here? No. What's he going to panic about? If he gets this rook here, then he's got like a two on one, but we've got protection. What are they doing? What are they doing? Push the pawn. What? Where's the rook going? I'm going to push the pawn. Wow, look how quick he went there. Oh, drastic. Yeah, because if I take, that's why he's moving fast. Or she. If I take, then his rook, com uh, rook comes down with a check. My rook can't come down and protect. Oh, savage. So I'm going to have to move it across, aren't I? That's even worse though, isn't it? If I move it across, then he takes. The only piece that can take is the king. Then his rook comes down here. Tack it up, so right down to the bottom, puts a check on. I have to move up. And then his queen's going to be getting checks on me, isn't it? I'm on a white square. Oh, that's harsh. I've got checkmated. Oh, my life. I don't like that. Well played. Damn it. So if my king's going to end up here, his queen is on a dark square. I don't think they can attack it without incurring the wrath of a promotion I'm sure just from that limited 1-2 calculation they take we take that's 1 2 he's still got his rook on the board what am I on about so then he can go up put a check on attack but he's not going to put a check there oh no dead meat oh, <laughs> this isn't fair oh the problems are playing advanced chess oh dear a 
I've, I've actually gone into a deep thing here, but it's actually got my king out into the open. It's like baiting, you know, baiting a, a bet, well, baiting something out that you want to get. And damn, I thought I was safe. I'm not safe. I'm just thinking though, with the tempo of them doing that, do we get like a drum and uh, sort of repetition thing? So it does take with the check, but can't take. So it's um, followed it through. Uh, queen, no, queen can't come there. So it said there's going to be these check things coming here. Oh, it's got a two on one on it on the rook. They've got a two on one on the rook. So I can't move. But his queen's going to come here. Oh, shit. Oh dear, his queen's coming right here with a check on me. Oh damn it, I'm gonna have to go here then, aren't I? But then he's just gonna get the rook off the board. I go here, then he just takes the rook. Oh, that's sad. Put a check on. He moves. And then I have no more checks and I'm blocking my own pawn. Oh, that is sad. That is so sad. Oh, I go here with just blam. Oh, then I'd have to come here, but then it goes. Blam! Checkmate! Wow, how did we get in this position? I was feeling really good about the pressure towards the king and now they've just got magic. Can't even go there. Can't even go there, it's just gonna go bang. Push the pawn up. I don't think he's going to take, is he? Because we'll get a queen up. Ah, savage times. Okay, well, checkmate. Damn it. We tried. We tried on the advanced section. This was the last game as well that we were playing. Oh, it's taking the queen. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, God. I thought it was going to take with the rook. Oh, this is even worse. Oh, dear. pain that they've got now though is that they can't get this pawn <laughs> how funny is that? <laughs> that that is surreal with the amount of pressure that was going on in that game and for it to end in this way um, it's quite fitting for the answer process absolutely fitting okay um, I didn't know he was taken with the queen, but we wanted to get this pawn pushed up at some point. We had a right flap on. The game was lost in our heads. Yeah, it was absolutely lost. It wasn't resignable. It was a case of, well, the opponent has to find those best moves, especially in that situation. I thought I had it all sewn up, got my rook and my queen on this open file with this pawn that we're looking to get promoted. And then the opponent was circumventing. That's what we mentioned at the very beginning. It's like, or was it midway through? It's that the opponent isn't going to give it to you on a plate. As the higher up you get, they're definitely not giving it to you. You have to work for it. So every move you make, they're wanting to get an, an advantage against you. And this was one of, this was probably the best one recently of me playing in this um in this region 
So yeah, the advanced process is really looking at the calculation um, in more detail for yourself, up to a maximum four, usually is a good two count calculation that will kind of see you through. But if you can see the bigger picture of what the opponent is doing, if you, it really is, yeah, genuinely like we've seen, it's looking at the opponent's calculations or potential calculations against yourself. And like we've shown, they don't do anything that I said they're gonna potentially do. It's nice when they do, but the majority of the times they definitely don't and I get the shock of my life and I think that is what is helping to improve my game um, ever so slightly um, because I'm now expecting the unexpected and I'm trying to fight back every time they're doing something um, that I'm not expecting so I have to then improve my thought process or find a better position and it always comes back again to basics it genuinely does. There's nothing magical that we're doing on the board here. Um, if the opponent's found a good position, it's because it's physically possible to find that position. And I've allowed that uh, because I've, I'm focused on my own movements. As humans, we're focused on what we're doing. We don't really want to spend time thinking about what the opponent can do to us, especially if we've got a position that we think should squish them. You know, it's hard to pull us away from that action like in this game here it's hard to pull me away from the thought that dude i should be winning here this should be okay and then suddenly from the back corner they've got like a back rank checkmate um, threat going on and they were squishing my king i think they had it won but it was a finishing move with queen e3 queen e3 You'd think that wouldn't be too dark a move, wouldn't you? But then it does have this aspect as well. Ooh, queen e3. <sighs> the only thing it's saying is moving the queen here for a check. Oh, that's definitely losing. Oh, does the pawn get up? No, the pawn won't get up. So thankfully, our opponent didn't find that better move and it brought us back into the game. Although it didn't feel like I was being brought in the game here, but I did struggle as to how their queen was going to squish us. So that's why I didn't press the resign button. I'm thinking, I don't know how they're doing it, but um, maybe they're going to get it now. <laughs> and I thought they were going with the rook. I thought they were going with the rook, so then if that happened, I was then thinking if we push the pawn up, it's not going to work, is it? And if they took, then we'd get a queen at least. So that's the sort of pattern that I had. And it's actually showing a bit of advantage for us here because then obviously we get the rook. Yeah, so that's what that's where I saw to, that's what I saw. So that would have worked for us. That would have been quite nice if they had done that, but they didn't do that at all. They took with the queen and I got the shock of my life, but it's absolutely out and out winning because we can take and the king is too far away from the pawn and we can simply push the pawn up here. The rook can't come and attack it. If it attacks it here, then it gets queen, so it's... Yeah, so that's quite a, a good feat. The only move that could have actually beaten us was the queen to e3. Yeah, so that was quite good. That's the advanced answer to chess. The tutorial is over.